Hi guys, welcome to the new video where we learn about the finance in a very easy and understanding language. So in today's video, I have one stock which from my opinion will give a massive returns in the coming future. So um, I'll be holding this stock from a long term perspective and uh, the same thing I'll be talking with you as well from a long term perspective only. This is uh, the HDFC life insurance. So currently uh, I see that it is trading at 532 and it is trading way below its peak level. So it is available at a very discounted price. So I'll talk about the valuations at the end of this video also. So I'll share my viewpoint and uh, my opinions based on the SDFC life insurance company. And uh, I'll divide, uh, I have divided it uh, into three main part. One, I'll talk about the industry overview so that you get uh, the clear explanations of how the insurance, what is the insurance industry, how it is working. And then I will talk about the financial performance of the HDFC lives. And uh, the third thing is like, I'll talk about the product mix and the comparisons of the HDFC lives with the other uh, life insurance one. And uh, at last, I'll talk about also the valuations and all those things. So first going to the industry overview, as you can see in the snippet, uh, so I'll give you some time to read the snippet. And uh, in short, I will explain basically uh, how this insurance work. So uh, these industries earn money from the premium that the customer provide to it and they invest that money into the markets to, uh, to earn the profits and to earn the interest on that particular uh, money that, they, and that they, they have taken from the customers. And the entire business model of the insurance basically works on the uh, probability that the claim will be there. So all the big players that are uh, there in the uh, insurance uh, uh, they decide and they uh, do a lot of algorithms and all those things over there uh, to decide uh, on the profitability of the company and how what at what premium the company can charge so that the company will be in the profit. So this is the industry overview. And uh, I'll tell you like uh, I always uh, tell people uh, about uh, the insurance sectors why it is very much under penetrated in uh, uh, in the India. So as you can see from this graph, uh, the penetrations in India is around like 4.4%, which is way, way beyond the other countries. So it, it clearly tells like the penetrations in India is very less. So we have uh, a great uh, chance uh, in the insurance sectors to grow. And uh, that is what the government is also focusing upon. So if you can see the other graphs, so here you can see that the in, in the size of the markets in US dollar billion, if you can see that India is at 53 and while the US in 568, so it's way, way beyond uh, the peak level. Uh, so currently uh, there is a lot of chance in this insurance sectors to grow. And that's why I'm saying that it's under penetrated sectors. Okay, so now your question will be like, okay, I got that the insurance sectors is under penetrated. But uh, why you are saying uh, that uh, the private sector will grow because we have a long history of the LIC, which is doing very great. So here is the explanation to that as well. As we can see uh, from the individual with respect to premium in the uh, insurance sector. So the private players in the market shares are growing at a very rapid rate. As you can see, the market shares in FY2122, it is 63%. Uh, so the private players are going at a very rapid rate because they are doing the educate research and they are doing uh, they have hired good people in order to do uh, great research in order to provide uh, what is the profitable sectors to grow and at which sector the company can target in order to earn the profit so now your question will be like okay we have a lot of private players in india currently like sbi life and icsa lombard and uh, and many other private players so why you are basically targeting upon the sdfc life so as we can see from the premium market shares in the first life insurance, so SDFC Life hold the uh, largest uh, premium market shares of 14.25%. After that, the SBA Life Insurance and then the ICA Lombard comes into the picture. This does not clearly signify is market shares, but it will give you the uh, it will give you the clear pictures about how the SDFC Life, SBA Life, and the ICA Lombard is currently functioning because the major part of the profit uh, and the businesses comes from the premium market share that I have. So now uh, we'll talk about the financial performance of the SDFC lives. So as we can see that the EUM is in a constant, uh, constantly growing, but we see a decline in the growth rate uh, uh, from 2021, 2022. This is because of the COVID situation that have, uh, uh, they, that was there in the 
uh, in these periods because there was a lot of claims that have happened uh, uh, in these periods uh, of uh, 21 and 22 so the eum has declined but uh, we see going forward that uh, uh, that much of claim will not be there and uh, so it is for sure to grow at a much rapid rate so talking about the financial term, financial performance so the one thing that we always need to analyze whenever we analyze any um, insurance sectors is the embedded value what is the embedded value of that particular stock so uh, i'll talk about the embedded value in a very short and easy language so basically embedded value is uh, whatever the company net, net assets uh, that it is currently holding and according to the plan that they have decided what will be the profit in the future and the value of that profit in present term so when when those two things gets added that results in embedded value so let's look at the uh, ev values of uh, the sdfc life so uh, the ev as you can see in the graph the ev is growing at a at a very rapid pace for the sdfc life like uh, uh, from 20 percent uh, it is 2650 in FY21-22, we see that it is 30.048. And the NBM, that is the new business margin, uh, it is also growing at a very, very good pace from 25.9%. Now it is at 27.4%. So I'll talk about the new NBM for a short. So basically, NBM is like uh, uh, whatever the new business uh, that the particular company is generating, what is the margin of profit that they are running on that? So that is the new business premium and uh, uh, and we can also see the evop percentage it is also growing even after the covid has been hit it is growing at a very good pace so uh, now the uh, as we can see that the claims will not be uh, there for sure in the coming future if anything uh, uh, any drastic things have happened in the future so it for, it for it is for sure that it is growing uh, it will grow at a much rapid pace in the coming future now let's see the market shares uh, uh, of the company in different of this HDFC life in different sector. So market share, uh, we, we see this graph. So in the this is individual with respect to premium, the group and the total new business. As we can see that the uh, HDFC life is growing in all the sectors. Uh, so uh, we can see that it is continuing to deliver the consistent and all round performance in all the segments. Like we can see the uh, with respect to the premium, it is 14.2 percent, and in 2021 it is uh, grown to 15.5 percent, and it has been reduced to 21.22 because of uh, what I said earlier. It's uh, COVID uh, situations was there. So uh, if we are fortunate and we don't see any drastic uh, health issues. Uh, uh, in coming future so we'll see these sectors to grow at a much much faster rate than uh, than we are seeing for here so yeah so uh, overall we have a great financial performance of this sdfc life uh, so now your claim would be that okay the sdfc life financial performance is very good and it has a prominent market shares in the private players which is set to grow but how you can say that the lic is lic is not doing the adequate research and it will get badly hit. So uh, here's the explanation to that as well. If you see this is a product miss of FY 2022, where we see that the LIC is uh, basically most of it is concentrated on uh, the ULIPs and the participating. So in the insurance sectors, uh, these ULIPs and the participating is not a highly profitable business. While you go for a non-participating, if the insurance uh, sells the non-participating the groups the production the annuity one that is a highly uh, profitable business but we see that the lic is continue to sell the ulips and the participating which is not a very high profitable business but if we look at uh, the sdfc life and the 25 and uh, other than 25 and 22 percent the 33 percent is basically in the non-participating which is a very highly uh, uh, profitable the groups and the production constitutes a lot of percentage of uh, its product that they are selling. So we are seeing that uh, uh, these private players are doing the educate research and they are continue to reduce this uh, ULIFS and the participating one which is not a very highly profitable business and that's why uh, I am saying that uh, this LICs are not uh, focusing upon the profitability of the company. So 
and that's why in the coming future you will see the private players will take on the LICs and they are continue to grow and these LIC will get a badly hit in the future. So, uh, there are a lot of private players. So uh, let's look at uh, uh, the product mix of uh, the SDFC lives as well as the SBI life with a period of time. So uh, if we look uh, at the product mix of SDFC life, so we see that uh, the ULIF sector is continue to decrease and they are majorly, this shows that how much their focus is on the profitability of the company. So they are continuing to reduce this ULIF sectors from 55% to 25% till Q1 FY 2023. Uh, While well, we see the SBI live products, the ULIPS and the participating one is increasing from FY21 to 2022. But uh, I am sure that uh, it will uh, it will decrease with the uh, with the future time. So they are also a very good sector. So I think that in the coming future, these ULIPS and the participating sectors in the SBI live will also decrease. But uh, one thing uh, uh, is for sure that uh, why I, I have picked the SDFC life is if you can see this snippet, the new business growth of the SDFC life, the growth, uh, if you can see the growth from FY19 to FY20 uh, in the new business, because the new business consumes a lot of percentage of uh, the profitability in the companies. So if you can see the growth in the SDFC life, it is like 55.3% which is highest in the private players so this is the reasons why i have picked the sdfc life um, and uh, why i'm saying that it has a mass it is going to give a massive returns in the future so that is my viewpoint so uh, let's look at this snippet and you will clearly get uh, that uh, how the sdfc life is focusing upon uh, reinventing some uh, some new things and doing their uh, experiments and trying to find out what is helping that particular company. So this SDFC Life is uh, uh, and uh, has announced the acquisitions of the Excite Life for rupees six thousand six hundred eighty seven crores. So uh, as you can see that how this SDFC Life is much focused upon uh, the insurance. Uh, we already have seen that there is a merger uh, between the SDFC Life and the SDFC Bank. So we will see that uh, we'll get uh, uh, these SDFC Life will get a lot of clients from the SDFC Bank also. So uh, we are seeing a great future ahead for these SDFC Life and they are, uh, these SDFC groups is not focusing upon the SDFC Life and uh, which, uh, which they are also seeing a lot of growth potentials in that. So that is my viewpoint on these SDFC Life. Uh, now coming to the valuations perspective, if we see uh, that currently the SDFC Life is trading at 30% uh, 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 from its peak. So these stock is available at a 30% discount. So I see that there is a, a, a great opportunity and I have taken a major positions in the SDFC Life since it is trading at a 30% discount. But this is not a buying or selling advice and you have to think on your own. And if you want, you can take positions, but that is your responsibility. It may go down from this point as well. But from my perspective in the coming future, I am seeing that it is sure to increase and it will give us a great return. But you have to think on your own before investing in these stocks. And that is only your responsibility. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channels and comment on it. This gives me motivations to keep coming with some new videos and some new informations which i can share with you so that we keep on growing so we'll meet in the next video with some new informations and some new stocks till that time bye, -bye.